live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life on this Wednesday, March 2nd. I'm Courtney Savala. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Shore. Uh, happy Texas Independence Day. Did you know it is also Sam Houston's birthday? He served as the first and third president of the Republic of Texas and was one of the first people to represent Texas in the United States Senate. It's a big day for our state. It is a big day. Lots to celebrate. And a lot coming up on Houston Life. Houston, of course, is the setting for season 19 for Bravo's Top Chef. I'm taking you behind the scenes during this exciting culinary competition. Find out what the judges have to say about their time in the Bayou City. I'm still shaking that this happened. Making our city look good. Also in today's Wine Club Wednesday, poured by HEB, we're talking all about award-winning wines from this year's Rodeo Uncorked. We've got a red and a white, no matter your budget. Plus, we're getting a look at Sugarland's new mobile Sugar Cube, which includes everything you need to throw a great block party. And now let's check in with Joe Sam for a look at what he has coming up. Hey Joe. Hey guys, yeah, I'm gonna be chatting with one of the stars of the Broadway masterpiece Hamilton and finding out how he feels about performing in his hometown. We're gonna send things back to you. Okay, all that coming up, but first let's get a check of today's forecast. That is right, our weather has been fabulous. Let's check in with the man who has all the answers. Frank is standing by with the latest on this Wednesday. It's a fabulous day. The skies are blue on me and you. <laughs> Down in Deep the in the heart, of, heart Texas. of Texas. I know. Look at this beautiful <laughs> sky right over the rodeo once again. So you're in great shape wherever you are across southeast Texas. It's a pretty day. It's going to continue to be a nice afternoon. I have 72 in Bush, 73 Hobby, 76 for Sugarland, and then 10 degrees cooler than that in Galveston. If you're headed to the carnival this afternoon, no problems there. Right there in the low 70s, it'll cool off a bit as the sun goes down. And in fact, for the uh, rodeo uh, in, in the concert, tonight 62 at 7 57 at 9 and 55 at 11 so once again it's going to be a little on the cool side as you head out of that concert and back to your car so just wear one of your best rodeo shirts and bundle up a bit but other than that we're in great shape coming up we'll talk about when we have our next chance of rain and 80s for the weekend I remember the 80s. Oh. That was a great <laughs> what a decade. Great decade. <laughs> that was a great time. You in the spin 80s. me right round, baby, baby right, right round, round, baby, right round. That was one of these. Yeah. <laughs> On your roller skates. Oh, I like it. Isn't it an all skate? I yeah. like it. <laughs> Goodness, let's be on a little bit. All right, Frank. Cheers to the 80s. <laughs> That's right. The best decade of our lives. Hey, what better way to start off the show than with a little glass of wine, Courtney? I agree, Derek. In today's wine club poured by H. -E we're highlighting award-winning wines from this year's Rodeo Uncorked. This smells lovely. The first is a must-try. If you're watching your calories, it's Kim Crawford, and this is Illuminate. Kim Crawford is one of my favorite labels. It's such a great bottle of wine. I have not had Illuminate. I have not. Uh, this is Rodeo Uncorked Gold Medal winner. It's a Sauvignon Blanc from Marble Region of New Zealand. It's bright. It's crisp. Only 70 calories. That is not bad. I know. I, mean, I know. That's like half the calories of a typical glass of wine, right? This smells lovely. There's notes of passion fruit, guava. I like to say guava, mm. with an herbal and citrus finish. Pairs beautifully with fresh seafood, grilled vegetables, or just sit out on the patio. I think it goes great on the patio. Well, so what's cool about these wines is there's something called spinning cone technology, where they're actually able to spin out okay. uh, a portion of the alcohol from the base, and then they mix them back together. I wrote this week's newsletter so this is why I know all of this so what they're able to do is they're able to remove a lot of the alcohol content but it, the fragrance is still there the taste is still there so the alcohol that's reduced to below 1% that spun out is added back in, so total 7% alcohol in this bottle. Wow. Interesting, right? This is a fun fact. I love it. I'm a huge fan of this label. As I said, Kim Crawford, this bottle is around $13. I'm going to tell you, look, it's going to be in the 80s. We're going back to the 80s this weekend, as we just heard, Frank. This is a great one for the warmer weather. And for all the wine snobs out there, if you're out at a party talking about how you love her wine, mm -mm. Kim's a dude. It's a guy. So it's a guy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, gold this medal winner. As, yes, number one for today. The first one. Later in the show, we'll share the grand champion winning wine from this year's Rodeo Uncorked. It's delicious, so stay tuned for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And never miss a featured wine by joining our Houston Life 
Wine Club poured by HEB. Just use your smartphone to scan the QR code in the corner of your screen and then click the link that pops up. It's that easy. As a reminder, you can find today's featured wine at your local HEB. We have another one coming up. Again, this one, 13 bucks. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, I've got another reason okay. to toast. Do you know whose birthday it is? Other than the ones that we said at the top, Sam Houston? It's Dr. Seuss's birthday. <gasps> he was born in 1904. He Dr. would have been 118 Seuss. years old. And I remember when I graduated high school, uh, my family gave me the book, Oh, the Places You'll Go. Uh, it's That is a, yes, absolutely. Yes. It is one of my favorites. Also, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. I mean, Dr. Seuss has so many incredibly memorable quotes and, and fun books out there. And I love his story that he had to go to, I think, 75 publishers before his first work was published. Right, so he heard all the no's, right, and mm -hmm. thought he was going to give up, and that was not it. But your favorite quote is the one that... So my favorite quote, I think, because I have many, is, to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. Oh, I love that That's so, so much. Sweet. So sweet. As you already talked about, my favorite is, you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get, get on, on your, your way. way. Also, so sweet. And that is from Oh, The Places You'll Go. It is, and it's such a great book. I think, you know, birthdays, graduations, there's so many milestones that you can receive that gift. Or even just on a bad day, just pick it up and open it. We still have ours at home. For more information and to share your favorite quotes, head over to click2houston.com. That's some, where you're going to find the article. So many good quotes on that, too. Well, March is Women's History Month, which commemorates and encourages the study, observance, and celebration of the vital role of women in American history. Yeah, Houston Life has teamed up with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and their Women of Distinction event, which showcases women in our community who are giving back. That is right. Today we are honoring Ann Chow. Ann takes pride in volunteering in her community as acting as a teacher and mentor to those close to her. She says, encourage those to believe in themselves, stay persistent with your goals, and always help others succeed. She's a mother, wife, and friend. You can scan the QR code on your screen if you would like to learn more about Ann. <clears throat> and you can learn more about Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and their Women of Distinction 2022 by visiting Crohn'sColitisFoundation.org. And stay tuned as we continue to honor these women all month long. Very nice. Well, still to come, easy ways to live frugally. The best money-saving hacks to help you stay on budget and keep your money in your pocket. Sounds good to me. Don't go away. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back to Houston Live. Joe Sam is on the couch with us to cover some of our trending topics and headlines. I know you haven't made it out to the rodeo yet this Not yet. season, right? I mean, we're only a couple days in. But last night I was there and I ate every fried thing possible, <laughs> yeah. which I'm so glad because we have the list of best fried foods to best food on a stick right here for Rodeo Houston's award-winning eats. They do this every year. So all the vendors basically put their best dish forward for the coveted Golden Buckle Award. Here's the Click2 Houston article, and there's several categories. Um, there's best fried food category, best food on a stick, classic fair food, most creative food, best new flavor, best dessert. Best new flavor goes to bacon mac and cheese egg roll from the Finer Diner. That's mm. Rodeo Plaza 47. Most creative food, I could not get my hands on this last night, but I did try, is first place the Bonfire Funnel Cake, Corn Dog with No Name, and that's at Junction 303. But I'm going to tell you, I did eat everything else on this list. <laughs> Wait, so bonfire funnel cake, does that mean it's spicy hot or it's literally no, on fire? it's like a s'mores Oh. funnel cake. It was making my mouth water. It's going to blow your minds. <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. The, the fried Twinkie was a crowd favorite last night. I know that's classic. The Oreo. classic. Oreos. Oreos will be my the favorite. Oreo. Um, the red velvet cupcake, mm. had to have that. You know how I feel about red velvet cupcake. And the nutter butter. Can, Oh, right. Do I need to say anymore? I couldn't get my rings or my shoes off last night, so it took a couple hours. Have you ever had that problem? You get home from rodeo and your perfectly fitting boots, your feet swell and you can't get them off. Can't get them off. You got to use the boot Okay, jack. that's a tip. Now I'm going to go with my first button unbuttoned. That's how I'm going to go to rodeo. You wear your eating pants, <laughs> my eating sir. Pants. Yes. The sweat pants. The stretchy waistband. So how about this? Speaking of food, this couple in New Jersey, they were out to dinner at Cape May. They go to this lobster house restaurant and, uh, and the wife describes feeling like she lost a tooth while well, they ordered half dozen uh, oysters on the clam shell, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> no, they ordered 
a dozen oysters on the half shell. I think is probably where. <laughs> Clearly, your favorite on the menu. <laughs> my, my favorite thing. So you have some good thing. oysters now. One was a little heavier. And again, the tooth, did it break? No, they found a pearl. <gasps> they found a oh, pearl. No. Yes, wow. this thing could be worth thousands. Oh. They found the pearl in a clam. That's what she ordered, clams. So they've eaten hundreds of clams over the years. Nothing like this has ever happened. I mean, can you believe? I need this to happen to me. Besides me, you know, chipping the tooth on it. Right, but I right. I need to find a pearl in these oysters or clams, whatever, wherever they're at. I need to have it because I need to win something it's big. A pot of gold right Oh, it's there. a pot of gold right on your plate. Nice little surprise. <laughs> well, uh, there's an online group that shares money-saving hacks, and this is a frugal site subreddit. Have you heard of this never site heard before? Of this. No. I guess it's like Reddit, but different. I had never heard of it either. So here are a few that were featured. How about this? Instead of... Uh, Ordering books on your Kindle or going to the bookshop? How about getting a library card I love instead the of library buying books? Card. <laughs> How about check out the abandoned paint section at home improvement stores? You know, because a lot of times people will mix paint that they end up not liking. Using old cartons as coffee trays. Dumpster diving. Ooh. I'm out on that. Okay. Yeah. I'm probably not going to be doing that. <laughs> uh, but there, plenty of good food is thrown away all the time. Yes. Grocery stores and restaurants. Or cut a full-size sponge into thirds. I love all these ideas. There's probably, you know, there's so many things. They also say to look at your subscriptions and different things in your email. You forget mm -hmm. what you signed up for, so the, it's a waste. Those monthly fees, you It's never... a waste of money. Yeah. My mom would do the same thing back at home. She wouldn't dumpster dive all over the place, all over the city, but she would do it at home because she would always say we would throw away good things or go, yeah. throw away good food. So she would check the trash can to see what we've thrown away before she takes it on out. Uh, she does it all the time, so I always call her dumpster diver. I at like home. it, but see, she's diver. smart. She doesn't want to throw anything out. Aren't you a coupon clipper? I am. Yeah, I am. I you have to do it because that's the way you save. You bundle up. And when I go to Randall's, anytime I go to Randall's or HEB, I have all my coupons ready to go. <laughs> Okay. Save her. <laughs> Stocking it up. You know what, you guys? <laughs> we want to hear from you. What's your best money saving hack? We already have those great comments coming on in. Jessica, she writes in, staying off Amazon. That's what I said yesterday. Danger. Yes. I have to stay off of there. We have coming in next, Diana. She writes in, taking my savings directly out of my paycheck straight to my bank account. Do not touch it and it will grow. Worked for me. Yeah, you don't see mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. Forget all about it. All right, Jacqueline, she writes in, refrigerate any leftover coffee made at home and make iced coffee by next day. Drive through price save. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so she's doing the pot of coffee. Yeah, she's yeah. doing the pot of coffee. And Catherine, she writes in, growing my own veggies and herbs, raise hands for eggs. That's oh, nice. Catherine, we're coming over. Yeah. You know what? Our producer, Erin, she and her husband, Michael, they're yeah. getting their, their hens on Sunday, and they're going to raise chickens as well. This is going to be good. I'm going to be looking forward to a lot of those eggs coming my way. I hope so. so I can save money at the grocery store. <laughs> Young guys, we want you to head over to our Houston Life Facebook page. Join that conversation. We'll share a little bit more of your comments later on in the show. All right. When we come back, we'll share the benefits of medically managed weight loss and how it can positively affect your overall health. Plus, we're getting a look at Sugarland's simple and fun new way to throw the best party on the block. And the best partier, Lauren Kelly's got all the details. <laughs> Stay there when Houston Life returns. If you have struggled to improve your overall health, including reducing stress, improving sleep habits, and losing weight, a team of specialists right here in Houston can help you reach your goals. Here with more on the benefits of medically managed weight loss is obesity me medicine specialist, Dr. Deborah Horn, along with patient Clifton Gilmore, who has lost 70 pounds thanks to the help of UT physicians. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Derek. It's great to see you. Clifton, I want to start with you and your story. So you had sort of struggled with your weight for a time, even after undergoing two weight loss surgeries in 2015 and 2019. So explain your situation and how did Dr. Ha Dr. Horn rather help? I was referred to Dr. Horn by my surgeon after the second weight loss. Uh, they checked everything, everything was fine. And so we referred me off to Dr. Horn. And after being diagnosed with pre-diabetic, I've been di well, had diabetes back in 2014. So after that, I hooked up with Dr. Horn, uh, and she put me on um, uh, put me on a regimen. I followed her regimen. Uh, 
the tutor she gave me, uh, did me, you know, with the dietitians and the, the weekly and the check-ins, the monthly check-ins, it was, it helped me out a lot. Well, and going from 240 pounds down to 170 pounds, that's a big change, 70 pounds of weight loss. How has your life changed since losing all that weight? Um, confidence went up, self-esteem is up. Um, I enjoy working out now, I love going to the gym. Um, riding on an airplane is more comfortable. Uh, a lot of room around, you know, and then like being around my coworkers inspired me. I inspired them and people around me, they were like, oh, Clinton, you're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. How did you do it? That is fantastic. That is fantastic. Dr. Horn, I want to bring you in uh, because essentially the Center for Obesity Medicine and uh, Met Metabolic Performance, also known as COMP, in addition to losing weight, there are so many benefits for these patients. Yeah, you know, Clifton really hit the nail on the head. Um, we ask every patient a similar question at their first visit, and that is, what is their SMIO? What's their single most important outcome for spending time with us? And it's almost never a number on a scale. Well, that's important, and that's part of what we change, Clifton gave an answer which is very similar to most people, which is to improve his health, and he really did that. You heard him share that his prediabetes is now resolved again. He feels better from a mental health standpoint and an engagement in life. And that's our ultimate goal. You know, we do it through treating the disease of obesity, but our real focus is to get people to that place of feeling engaged and healthy in life. And how typical is Clifton's story, Dr. Horn, in terms of, of folks who come in and say, listen, I've tried everything, even, even surgery, and I'm still in this situation. How common is that? Yeah, that's that's most of my patients. I mean, not most of them have had surgery, but a lot of them have had surgery. And, and my message that I share around that is we've been told so much when it comes to our weight that if you just eat less and move more, um, you can succeed. But it's, it's really bigger than that. It is our physiology, it is our hormones, it is our metabolism. And so I tell my patients, it's not your fault, it's your physiology. And as Clifton said, we're gonna give you the tools to interrupt that physiology and get you to a healthier place. And in terms of how common it is, you know, it's interesting. Um, I love that it's Texas Independence Week and, um, and all that good stuff. It's also Obesity Care Week in the United States this week. And World Obesity Day globally is on Friday. And that's really an effort to help people understand that there's medical care to treat their disease that they might not be aware of. And I think that's a big takeaway, take just that there is hope out there. Uh, we're out of time, but Clifton, final thoughts. Are you sleeping better? You, your stress level is lower? Your stress level is lower. Anxiety is under control. I just have a lot of energy. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Clifton Gilmore, congratulations on losing Thank the weight you. and feeling better. Dr. Deborah Horn, we appreciate your time and advice as well. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Gilmore, for sharing your story. Thank and if you. you would like more information, you can visit utphysicians.com slash comp, that's comp with two M's, C-O-M-M-P, or call 888-4-UT-DOCS, that's 888-488-3627. Now let's send things over to Courtney for a look at what she has coming up. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Derek, thanks so much. Getting together with your neighbors has become just as important as birthday parties, and Sugarland Sugar Cube was recently created to bring communities closer together. Lauren Kelly has more info now now and how to throw the best party on your block. Hi, Lauren, this looks so cute. This is absolutely adorable, you guys. And you know what, it was created in 2019. And then of course the pandemic happened and not a lot of people were getting together. But here to talk a lot more about it is the Assistant Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of Sugarland. This is Kimberly. We've kind of just been di just divulging into this big sugar cube. Why don't you tell everybody what it is and how they can get a hold of it? So this sugar cube, it's all about building community. We really, you know, we live in a world where you may not even know your next door neighbors. So, right. so we 
want to build communities of one block at a time and we want to make it easy for people to do that and you may not you know maybe you have trouble with planning maybe you don't have the stuff that you need the tables the chairs all of that right so, the tent even that was so nice with the shade today <laughs> exactly so this is what I like to call a party in a box it has everything you need to make a great party and I love this because you know what like you said the communities being built are really what is so great about Sugarland right we, we might not know our neighbors but being outdoors and just mm -hmm. getting to know them every night is really important and I think that renting something like this or getting a hold of it and using it mm -hmm. is just a great way for everybody to really get to know each other absolutely and it I'd like to you know make sure that everyone knows it's free as well so we want to make it as easy as possible and this comes straight from the city of Sugarland how can people actually get a hold of it or get more info on it sure so they can look on our website uh, sugarlandtx.gov forward slash sugar cube um, or if they if they have trouble finding that they can always call 311 and get a hold of it that way but you have to be a registered neighborhood in the city of Sugarland and then we take care of the rest I love the fact that it says you make the plans we bring the party because we've been playing the connect for there's all kinds of fun games in it you've got like a mini chair mm -hmm. you've got the little art easel for the kiddos mm -hmm. there's really something the adult Jenga board which mm -hmm. I'm sure is fun and and I did see that you know you can even bring the pizza and be the, the neighbor that everybody loves right yeah <laughs> there's something for all ages in the sugar cube we'll take a look more inside of the sugar cube a little bit later on in the show Derek and Courtney back to you guys in the studio what a great idea Lauren it just makes you feel good absolutely I love the simplicity absolutely. of it too there's no planning they yeah. do all the planning it's great we'll see you in a bit Lauren I gotta move to Sugarland. Anyway, Joe Sam is standing by now with more on Hamilton, which you can catch on stage right now at Hobby Center. Hi, Joe. Hey, Derek. Coming up, find out more about the local actor performing in Broadway's Hamilton and his role on stage. And, of course, we'll be getting a check of what's coming up for the News at 4, including how Rodeo Houston is honoring military members today. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Wednesday, just about 3.30. Yeah, glad to have you with us. Let's get more of your responses to today's question of the day. We asked, what is your best money-saving hack? Anne-Marie writes in, stay out of Target and Hobby Lobby. Yep. Also, make a grocery or meal list before going to the store. That's a great idea, because if you go to the store hungry without a plan, oh, all it bets gets are pricey. Off. The whole cart is filled with Oreos. <laughs> Robin writes in, Tuesday airplane tickets for travel. I've heard heard about this. I have two. They're cheaper. Okay. Very nice tip. And Madeline writes in, pay yourself first always. Don't spend money you don't have and don't go broke trying to look rich. Amen. As Susie Orman would say, you're trying to impress people you don't even like. Oh, I love it. <laughs> She's so honest. Let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look what's coming up at the top of the hour. Guys, the grocery shopping thing when I'm hungry, oh. I come oh, yeah. home with bags of food and I'm like, we got to go out to eat. I got nothing. The, all the time. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, 17 bags of chips later, you're like, did I need all of those chips? Mm -hmm. Well, well yes. Probably 15 of them. Yeah. Maybe. But even going to a restaurant hungry, you, it's like, okay, I'll have the appetizer. And yes. The, and, then, and you're like, halfway through the meal, at least you can take it home. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Box yeah. it on up. Yeah, my best hack is probably, I would say, uh, a website called uh, mywife.com. <laughs> she, she's my so wife. good with numbers. Oh, where do you find one of those? <laughs> she's so good with numbers, and, you know, um, she, she knows how to rein me in. Yeah. And I, I need that from time yeah. to time. Well, don't we know it. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, the staying in and cooking thing is probably the best hack I have, but, but I like to cook, so I think it works out, as opposed to going out all the time. We're coming to your house. Okay, come yeah. on over. Yeah, we know. We're going to be grilling and that, chilling. That's Actually, a good hack. Everybody go to Christine's for dinner. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we should be outside, my goodness, because yeah. it's uh, <sighs> such an, another nice day. Yeah. No, it really is. It's going to continue to be for much of the week, as you'll see. Temperatures right now in the 70s, about as warm as it is getting, is 76. Humidity again, right around 20%. So if you're headed to the rodeo, perfect carnival weather, 72, 72, 470 at 5, 66 at 6. No complaints there. Tim McGraw in the house tonight, 62 at 7. A little cool as you go to your car, but nothing unbearable. All in all, a beautiful evening. High pressures in control. That's bringing in this southerly flow, and so that's why it's getting warmer and warmer, and that's going to continue. Perfect can't last forever. We'll see some 80s as we head towards Saturday. I know, right? So a little warmer with some slight chances of rain coming up at 4. We'll talk about the rain and when you'll need that umbrella okay. or parasol or whatever you have these days. All right, some slight imperfections, but that's we'll right. do it. Okay. <laughs> Frank, thank you, sir. All right, look now at some of the other stories that we are covering this afternoon. The clock is ticking. 
To the 7 p.m. deadline for Harris County to report its election results to the state. Yesterday, the county believed it might not be able to meet that deadline. We are going to look into how the count is going and what happens next. And it is Military Appreciation Day at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. We're going to bring you a live report to show you how Rodeo Houston is honoring the men and women who serve. Plus, being a cowboy can be tough and dangerous work. A Houston favorite talks to health reporter Haley Hernandez about his recovery after getting trampled by by his horse. Wow. But uh, the yes. key word is there, he is recovering. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. That is good news. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you at 4 o'clock. Sounds good. As we know, Lynn Manuel's Miranda's masterpiece, Hamilton, it is award winning and it is here in town for a few weeks for shows. Yeah, Theater Under the Stars at Hobby Center. Joe Sam caught up with a local performer in the, in the ensemble making his dreams come true. Hi, Joe. Hey, guys. Yeah, Hamilton is the famous sung and rapped musical about America's founding father, Alexander Hamilton. It's also a huge platform for any performer like local actor and singer John Devereaux. I spoke with him about his start in the industry and performing in this iconic production. I'm past patiently waiting. I'm passionately smashing every expectation, every action is not a creation. John Devereaux has gone from the stage of Texas Christian University to Broadway, making quite an impact with Lynn Manuel Miranda's masterpiece, Hamilton. Now he's back in Houston to put on yet another great performance. So, John, how does it feel being back in your hometown of Houston, Texas? I love being at home. In, in my home doing this thing that I love. I feel like I'm doing my, my town proud. I feel like I'm doing my parents proud. And I feel like I'm doing myself and my purpose proud. Discovering theater at the age of 14, John was taken to the stage after his friends got him involved in a school play, Bed, Breakfast, and Broadway. From there, his passion for singing and acting took off. Something just clicked. I, it's really hard to explain but I think we all have that moment in life where everything just feels right. And that was the spark. Now he's excited to see his dream come true, performing in Hamilton on the very stage where he got his start. In high school, I was in this theater as a part of the Tommy Toon Awards. I got to see our performance, we were nominated, and to be on a stage and on the same stage in an opening night in this theater was such a full circle moment. I'm in the ensemble as Man Six, and uh, the ensemble of this show is insane, incredible. It's just, the ensemble just enhances the show. There are so many talented people in the city. For those who are looking to get to where you are right now, what advice would you give them? What would you tell them in order for them to continue following their passions and chasing after their dreams? Have something in your heart. Know in your heart that you're going to do it. You're going to make it. You have to keep pushing and going forward to get what you want. You have to have that Hamilton mentality. Oh yeah, Hamilton runs until March 20th here in Houston at the Hobby Center. For more information, I'll have a link on our website about tickets, HoustonLife.tv. After the interview, you guys, we did like a rapid fire question with him and he had some incredible things to say about some of his hobbies. One thing that he really loves is playing video games in his downtime. Okay. You know, I'm a big video game person too, yeah. so we were going back and forth on different RPGs. He's absolutely incredible and he's so down to earth and he's giving that motivation and that inspiration for others to follow in their footsteps. The performance is fantastic mm. and I love that he was also part of the New York ensemble yes. and is here back home. So it's just full circle. I always say there's a Houston connection. And you were able to see it too. I did, and Derek, yes. You're going to be going to see it, right? I'm going tomorrow night. I'll yeah. be there. It's lovely. <laughs> Can't wait. We want to make sure everybody goes and checks it out while it's here in Houston. Very nice. And nice to see a local uh, back yes. on our stages here in Houston. Coming up on Houston Life, Wine Club Wednesday continues. We are sharing one more wine. It is literally a grand champion winning red. You didn't know you needed. It. And now let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who's got the perfect way to bring all the neighbors together. Hi, Lauren. Hey guys, the Sugarland Sugar Cube is the way that you can throw the best pot block party on the block. We're gonna go through all the things that come in the Sugar Cube, like those balls right there to play with when Houston Life returns.
Come back. <laughs> The Sugarland Sugar Cube was an idea that came about in 2019 to bring this sugar cube out and uh, communities could rent it in their in their neighborhood, but then the pandemic happened. So it's like a brand new idea that we wanted to show off today for the city of Sugarland. And Kimberly here with the city of Sugarland Parks and Rec has been telling us all about it today. I love this idea. It's really a great way to plan a block party and then have the block party just come straight to you, right? Absolutely. We drop it off on Friday afternoon for you and pick it up on Monday morning and we have all of the things that are maybe hard to get that so you don't have to rent. Them. Okay, so let's talk about the things that come inside of the sugar cube. We were literally running down a list of things that mm -hmm. come in it when you drop it off. Right, we have two large coolers. We've got eight six foot tables. We've got four great pop up canopies that are very colorful and 30 chairs over on the side. So you don't have to scrounge all your neighbors exactly. chairs together. Like you said, that's kind of hard finding the table, mm -hmm. finding the tent, finding those chairs or anybody that has a cooler really. And that right. comes with two right here. Yep. So let's walk around. Sure. It does come with a bunch of games oh. too. We have the connect four. We had the Jenga, just a couple of board games. It comes with these balls as well. But what I really liked is when you said if somebody forgets gets how to use it because you guys drop it off. Mm -hmm. The directions are right here on the door. Right, we have directions. So just in case you took taken everything out and you forget how to put it in, we've got directions on how that goes back in there. And then just a list of everything we have. We have so many games. We have games for little kids, for big kids, for okay. adults, for everybody to enjoy. And it kind of comes with this binder of kind of a how-to, what's in there and what you need to put back in. And what I like about it, you mentioned, is you drop it off on, let's say, a Friday, mm -hmm. and then you get to keep it through you get to keep it through Monday. The whole weekend, yeah. the whole weekend is yours. So you yeah. can legit have the neighbors come over and have that party for a couple of days and not really worry about having to set things back up and put it back in here until you guys are done. Yep, absolutely. And the, the binder is a guide that really coaches you on how to hold your block party, how to send out the invitations, how to invite people, kind of what kind of day you should have it. It's just really an all-in guide. Here's a really good question. Do you have to be in Sugarland to rent and use the Sugar Cube? Yes, you have to be a resident okay. of Sugarland to use it. And how can we go about finding more info on how to rent the Sugar Cube? Sure. Um, we can check out our website, sugarlandtx.gov forward slash Sugar Cube. And look, you guys even have the big orange cone so that you can put around your name. For any of those neighbors that you don't want to come, you can just set those orange orange cones up and be like, nope, this is a special block party for my hood. <laughs> we're all about safety. We want to make sure that we're, we're controlling traffic totally. in the area. Be kind to your neighbors as well. <laughs> Kimberly, thank you so much for the info. This is a great idea. We great. love it. Thanks and more for info out. at HoustonLife.tv. Send it back to you guys in the studio now. Lauren, I see there's an invite list and a non-invite <laughs> list. Yeah. Great use for those orange cones, Don't Lauren. Don't worry, you're on it. <laughs> Very Thanks, nice. Girl. Thank you. Well, of course, Rodeo Houston kicked off this week, so what better way to celebrate the season than with a grand champion winning wine from Rodeo Uncorked. Southwest Regional Manager Jay Lore of J. Lore Vineyards and Wine, Jory Sally, shares the perfect red worth its price tag and what a big deal the awards it earned. This truly is a big deal to be honored with the grand champion wine title. We are very, very lucky to um, have been receiving, we've received this word and I, um, it's just so special to be a part of the rodeo and then me being a Houstonian and knowing how big it is here with us. But the winery and the J. Lore family is very excited to be a part of it as well. So. It's such a big win. And by the way, you're a grad of University of Houston mm -hmm. and you've lived in Houston pretty much your whole life, right? Yeah. Or part, better part, part of it. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about this wine and what the winning, what the title was. So we won Grand Champion Best of Show and that is the number one wine out of all of the about 2,800 wines wines that I, are entered. That is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. And then not only did we win that with this one wine, but we also won a number of other awards that helped us get the top all run winery award as well. Fantastic. And there, it really is a stiff competition because there are so many delicious wines. Let's talk about the vineyard uh, and why it is set apart from, from so many of the others. They're all great, right? But J. Lore is, there's something special about it. We are, um, 
we are very, very special in the sense that we are family owned and operated still. Um, we have the JLOR line and that is what we focus on the most, but um, we make a lot of wine for being still family owned and operated. So um, Jerry Lore is our owner and founder. He's the J in JLOR. Um, and then his three children are the second generation that are all involved in the winery as well. And um, something else that makes us special and sets us apart from everything else is we own everything. We don't source anything from anywhere, so it's all coming off of our own um, property, and we're seeing it from ground all the way into bottle. It is so beautiful. Can we go on vacation there? Please? I know, <laughs> yes, really. Can we know. leave right now? Let's go. Well, let's talk about the bottle that we have here. It is lovely. Walk us through the tasting. So this is majority Cabernet Sauvignon, and then Cabernet Franc, um, a little bit of Merlot, and a little bit of Petit Verdot, um, aged 100% in French oak barrels. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, it's tasting great now, but it'll also, if you want to save it for a little while, it'll taste great in a few years as well. It's a lovely bottle of wine. Price point is around $50. Yep. So mm -hmm. this is one of the more expensive bottles that's won. I mean, with Rodeo, we've seen winning bottles that cost, you know, $15. Right. But $50, I'm telling you, this this glass of wine is so delicious, you will want to drink it very slowly. Yeah. What do you recommend we pair this with? Ooh, I mean, you could pair this with a great steak. You could do some lamb chops with it. I mean, honestly, if you have a good wine and good company, you can eat whatever you want. Amen, <laughs> sister. I was going to say popcorn, chocolate, whatever. Yeah, whatever. By itself, it's lovely. Yeah. Dory, thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers to you. Thank you. Cheers to uh, the two saddles yes. uh, you have now won. Congratulations. It yes. really is a big Thank deal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, also, we should point out a very easy way to join our Houston Life Wine Club poured by HEB is to use your smartphone to scan the QR code right there in the corner of your screen. Then click the link that pops up. It is totally free to join. And once you do, you'll have access to exclusive giveaways. You'll even have a chance to be part of our virtual tasting. Which we love, by the way. As a reminder, you can find today's featured wine at your local HEB. And happening now through March 20th, you can get 10% off featured Rodia Uncorked International Wine Competition wines at HEB. Coming up, we're giving you an inside look, an exclusive look at the new season of Bravo's Top Chef. See how production brought the show to Houston and transformed NRG Arena into that TV set. This is so cool. You don't want to miss it. Houston Life will be right back. So I'm gonna aerate it. Not too fancy. One minute! That clock is not your friend. Oh my god. Welcome to Houston. I love it. I'm already freaking out. It is premiere week for season 19 of Top Chef, and this time Bravo chose Houston as their city. World-renowned chefs come to town for celebrity judging, and local culinary icons are showcased as well. Fifteen chefs compete for the coveted title in the most diverse city in the nation. I had the chance to go behind the scenes. This is an exclusive look at the kitchen, and today we begin with a tour of the Top Chef set, the soundstage for judges' table, quick fire challenges and the full Top Chef kitchen. I feel like I'm on Top Chef now. Welcome to the Top Chef kitchen. It took the production crew of approximately 150 people two weeks to set up at NRG Park. Uh, it's crazy, I have to say. I know a lot of our departments, you know, the lighting, culinary, art department audio, tech, all of them, you know, we're constantly on the move. So even though we're here today for a quick fire challenge, um, you know, next thing is we're going to move on to location. So everybody's going to move all their gear out so the kitchen stays, but a lot of our equipment goes onto the road. So we're packing up constantly, packing it out and doing it all over again. This is where quick fire challenges happen and judges table. As you can see, we've got a real wood fire oven. You can smell it. Yeah, I smelled it right when we walked in. Yeah, and it's, nothing's on fire, it's all <laughs> safe. Here's our hotline that's split into two, so it's kind of identical on both sides, just to give chefs more space to move around. All the food here, I mean, this is yep. what the chefs can use, right? I mean, Absolutely. this is not fake food. No, this it's is real. real food, yeah, it's real food. And our culinary department's fantastic and they put together this pantry, you know, they're constantly changing it and bringing in new things so that we're not getting the same food over and over again. During season 19, you're gonna see so many Houston landmarks showcased, and this kitchen was constructed with the city in mind as well. This uh, is a Houston, Texas mural, and we've got this one here, and then the one across the way as well, 
All three of these are from Gonzo, who is obviously a very popular street artist here in Houston, to really make the kitchen feel like it belongs in Houston. The schedule for the staff, the chefs, and judges is grueling. I got a chance to rub elbows with judges Gail Simmons and Tom Colicchio about what to expect from Top Chef Season 19. You can expect a few things like you always do. Great food, really interesting chefs from around the country who are cooking at the highest level. Uh, you can expect us to make them run around a lot, but also really digging into the history of the city. And, you know, we always lean on that history to inform the challenges that we present to our chefs. Usually when we're in a, a new city, it, it becomes like another character. And so we're going to see a, a lot of, uh, you know, what Houston's all about. I mean, it's a extremely diverse uh, city and I think we'll, we'll celebrate that. They were in Houston for about a month and definitely got a chance to explore the city. Now, I think a lot of people think, oh, Houston, Texas, everybody's riding around on their horses and eating barbecue. We're much, we're much more than just that. Yeah, in fact, um, with the exception of one of the challenges, I haven't had barbecue since I've been here. Uh, I've been having mostly, uh, um, you know, a little Tex-Mex, a little uh, Vietnamese food, uh, Chinese, uh, so it's, it's a little of everything. I'm eating lots of Tex-Mex, I'm eating lots of Vietnamese, Viet Cajun. I went for an extraordinary Cantonese feast last night with live king crab and, um, you know, like gorgeous fish and seafood. I'm eating a lot of barbecue because you can't come to Houston and not eat great barbecue. And it actually has been really eye-opening to me to get to understand Houston a little more because I do think that, especially from a culinary standpoint, point, it is largely unknown just how deeply um, historic the city is, the immigrant communities, the vibrancy of the food here, the depth of cuisine. So cool, right? My full interview with Top Chef judges Tom Colicchio and Gail Simmons is available for our KPRC2 insiders. Remember, you got to sign up. It is free. Head to click to Houston.com. Also, everyone, it's a big H-Town party, is invited to the official Top Chef Houston watch party happening tomorrow at St. Arnold Beer Garden and Restaurant starting at 530. In case you're wondering, uh, Houston's own chef Evelyn Garcia, there she is. She's right. been on Houston Life before. She is competing in season 19. We're going to chat with her tomorrow about this incredible opportunity. Of course, season 19 of Top Chef premieres tomorrow, 7 p.m. on Bravo. That was an exclusive look, y'all. Nobody else in town got that. <laughs> and yeah. I am so excited. The amount of COVID tests I had to take. You went to an episode. Yeah. I mean, we were there constantly going back and forth to different venues. The preview is just incredible. It gives me chills. And I'm so proud that our city looks amazing. It looks so good. And finally. Finally, people will have another window into just how incredible not only our city is, but how great the food scene is here. Courtney. Oh, it's so good. And again, Insider, check out the full interview with both Tom and Gail. I can call them that. We're friends now. Yeah, so, we're and we're going to be at St. Arnold. You're going to go tomorrow? Right? I, have, I have Hamilton, but oh, I'll come after the show. Okay, I'll be there as well, and it's going to be a great season for sure. Okay, very nice. Still ahead on Houston Life, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including the special mission behind one local nonprofit. And as we had to break, let's check in with Nisha. Turner for a look at what's coming up on entertainment tonight. Hi, Nichelle. Courtney and Derek, tonight on ET, we're with Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz for the New York premiere of The Batman. Did Robert really wear Clooney's bat suit at the audition? Jason Momoa was also there. Hear what he said about Lisa Bonet. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, we're giving you a tasty way to help a local nonprofit that's providing assistance to patients at Texas Medical Center. And Houston chef Evelyn Garcia chats about being part of the highly anticipated season of Bravo's Top Chef, filmed right here in Houston. Yeah, very nice. Well, let's get more responses to our question of the day. We asked, what's your biggest money-saving money hack? Paul writes in, this is a good one. Well, I'm sure I'm not alone here, but I hid some money in my Bible. Now, if you know me, I don't read my Bible, but it's probably a good thing because a year later after our pandemic and being unemployed, he found five, 400 bucks in cash. Oh my gosh. Okay. Winner, winner. Well, yeah, check the Bible. When in doubt, Helen writes in, getting your children to move out. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, that's sweet. Lindsay says, I shop online and put things in my cart, but never check out. Very satisfying. Oh, you know, Ooh, I've heard kind of this strategy, the itch, right? Yeah, it gives you the endorf endorphins of buying something without actually buying it. You know, I, so I'm terrible at returning things. And if if I order something and it doesn't work out, I'm more likely just to donate it because I hate standing in a return line. You just line. can't do it. Even mailing something back takes so much work. I know it does. Oh, well, my mom does the Bible thing. I know. I'm sorry, Mom. She puts... Don't hide money in your house. Because yeah. usually you hide it from yourself. Uh, hey, how was rodeo last night? Oh, my gosh. It was so much fun. Keith Urban, amazing. Um, I'd never seen him live. It was his eighth rodeo. It was really incredible. I had a Trill Burger, Bun B's uh, Burger. I had that last night with the fries, a little spicy seasoning on the fries, and then everything fried known to man. That's good. We ate it. And then you gave it all up for Lent, right? I did. Okay, one <laughs> last hurrah. My fingers are still swollen, though. I'm all swollen from the amount of salt. and. Well, I think you look fantastic. Cheers to Cheers. our Wine Club Wednesday. Oh, and I hit the wine garden, too. <laughs> Said hello to all of our friends there. <laughs> Why like, not? When how was wrong? the rodeo? I did this, and then I did this, and then I, I know that's how it goes, right? 90 reasons to rodeo this year. I'll be out there tonight uh, with Brandon, so if you see us, say hi to all of us. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Uh, Keith and Christine, cheers to you. We'll see you back tomorrow. Yeah, cheers yeah, I, to you guys. I would not expect Courtney to go to the rodeo and not go to the wine garden, you know? Oh, and do I mean, all the on. fun things. <laughs> Seriously, you got to start there. Well, right? I'm pretty sure Courtney has a plaque at the wine yeah. garden. <laughs> Just saying. She's an honorary Well member. deserved. <laughs> Thank you for it. the recognition. <laughs> all right, ha happy hump day, guys. Yes, Thanks, you too. Guys.